Hi everybody, Nick here. Today I wanted to talk to you about budgets. That is a boat ownership budget. So regardless of what kind of boat you end up buying, whether it be 20 foot long or 70 foot long, whether you buy a narrow boat or a GRP, um, you need to kind of get an idea of what it's going to cost you once you're on the cut. So regardless of what kind of boat you get, this is what I've um, put together. Now, all this um, information comes from feedback I've received on Facebook forums, uh, YouTube, uh, and my own research uh, just on various websites and so forth. So it's a culmination of a whole bunch of figures from all over the internet, um, and I've put it together in a simple format so that you guys can get an understanding of you know, what the costs are when you decide to move on to the cut. Insurance. Now, regardless of what kind of boat you have, you'll need to get insurance and you'll need to get this before you can apply for your license, your Canal River Trust license. Excuse me, I'll um, put in there about a nominal amount of about £10. This can vary greatly depending on the age of the boat, the length of the boat, etc, etc. Um, but um, for the intensive purposes of this, uh, this video, I've put in there £10. Um, your Canal River Trust license. Again, this will vary on depending on the length of your boat and whether you decide to pay for it upfront or in monthly installments. I've put in um, the upfront costs because for a 24 foot boat, based on the, uh, the information provided by CRT, uh, with an upfront payment discount, you're looking at around 535 pounds for the year. Um, if you're gonna get a 50 foot boat, um, consider that price will double. If you're going to get a narrow boat with, a, with about 50, foot, 50, 50 feet, then that price will probably double and then some. Okay, so just be aware of that. But for my purposes in buying a GRP, up to about 24 foot, you're looking around 535 per year and about 44 pounds a month. Mooring. So depending on where you decide to moor your boat, you'll need a home mooring. I would strongly recommend you get a home mooring in your first year, especially in winter, okay? It can get very miserable and stuff uh, in winter, um, and it will just be good to have some security, I guess, you know, especially in the winter months, um, and also access to shoreline power um, and facilities like El San. But this will vary greatly. So the um, one of the moorings I was considering is on the Aylesbury Arm, that's the um, the Aylesbury Arm of the Great uh, Grand Union Canal. It was around four thousand pounds a year. Um, obviously, the further down south you decide to moor your boat, the more expensive it's going to become. Up here in Manchester, um, for a similar mooring, you're looking at about half the price. But again, you know, it all depends on where you go. Um, you know, how big your boat is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, blacking. So I've admitted a blacking for this for the purpose of this exercise because I'm buying a GRP. It's plastic, it's not steel, so blacking is not required. However, um, I'm sure that there'll be some kind of um, <clears throat> excuse me treatment that I'll need to do for the GRP. That's the fiberglass hull. Uh, back in Australia, when we had a yacht, we had to remove the uh, we had to take the boat out of the water at least once a year just to remove the barnacles. Um, so, but that was in salt water. This is in still water. Um, there's a bit of a difference. So we'll, I, I guess we just got to wait and see and, and see what happens. But, um, I'm a little bit unfamiliar with what's required at this stage, but if you do have a, if you do decide to buy a steel hull, as it is a narrow boat, then please, um, put this down because it is quite an expensive exercise. Um, and over about. You need to do it every two or three years on an narrow boat, so you're looking at around a thousand pounds, roughly. Okay, again, it depends on the size of your boat, the style of boat, um, and how much work you need to do. Emergency services. So, I strongly recommend. This is what I'm planning on doing: is joining the RCR. It's the basically um, canal and river rescue. Uh, I think their silver license is around ten pounds a month. You can get the gold one. Uh, I think it's like 20 pounds a month. It just buys you peace of mind. So if anything should go wrong, um, you know, you've got a little bit of peace of mind. You've got a number you can call and say, look, I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere. My engine's died. 
can you please give me a tow back to Marina or whatever it is, but it's just good to have it there. And it's only £10 a month. So I'd strongly recommend everybody get that, at least in your first year, until you have a bit better understanding of what you're doing with your boat. <clears throat> um, servicing. So I don't know about you. There's things like oil filters, air filters, fuel filters, um, all those sort of things need to be changed in a certain amount of um, uh, engine hours. I've put it down here, 10 pounds a month. Um, on a GRP, you're running an outboard motor with petrol. Um, there may be spark plugs that need to be replaced, things like that, or oh, fuel filter perhaps. Um, so I've just put in there a nominal figure of £10 a month just to cover my bases there. Upgrades. So you know the boat saying is bring out another 1000 okay? Well, <laughs> I hate to say it, but you're going to have to spend money on the boat at some point to upgrade its... Um, all of the interior stuff. So a pump may die, water pump, or um, you may have to replace some electrical wiring or some lighting or whatever it is. There's going to be something on your boat that's going to need upgrading. So um, I've decided to put in there 200 pounds a month. Now that sounds quite a lot, but when you think about it, you know, a new battery, if you're going to get a new AGM battery, you're looking at 100 pounds anyway. So I've put in a, a normal amount of 200 pounds a month. That's two. That's two thousand four hundred pounds a year. That buys you actually quite a lot. Um, but I would strongly recommend that you allocate some money towards that. It might not have to be two hundred pounds a month. It could be like a hundred pounds a month or fifty pounds a month. Again, that will vary depending on how big your boat is, how old it is, and what kind of upgrades you wish to do. So there we've got a total fixed cost of five hundred and seventy-four pounds a month. <clears throat> now to the variable costs. Now, again, all these variables means obviously they're going to change over time. A lot of the ones, a lot of the figures above are fairly fixed. So things like your mooring fees, your license fees, insurance, they're all going to remain the same pretty much. Once you, once you establish yourself, they're going to stay the same. Hence why I've called them fixed costs. Your variable costs, however, will go up and down depending on the usage. So things like coal, for example, Coal you'll need to keep warm in winter. You probably only need it probably nine months of the year. So that's what I've calculated this on and I've worked out it's gonna cost around 44 pounds a month. Gas, again, it depends on how much you use, but I'll put in there roughly 10 pounds a month or 120 pounds a year. That may go up, I may go down, depending on my usage. Electricity, I'm planning on installing solar panels. So hopefully I won't have too many power issues, but if I was going to be ashore, you'd probably expect to pay around £10 a month. Um, again, it depends on your usage, depends on the marina and how much you charge per kilowatt hour. Petrol or diesel, again, depends on usage. I put in there about £10 a month. Pump out, not uh, applicable in, at this point. A pump out toilet requires you to basically put all your human waste into a tank, a separate holding tank for you to pump out um, at a, a marina that has those facilities. Um, if I was going to buy an narrowboat, or when I come to buy an narrowboat, I will reluctantly get a pump out because um, from the reviews that I've read, um, they can create more problems than they actually solve. Um, you've also got a holding tank that's going to hold all of your um, human waste um, for a long period of time. It's also expensive. It costs about twenty pounds to empty your pump out toilet. So I'm going to be trialing a composting toilet. I'm probably going to make one, but um, I'm going to after the reviews I've read online, um, I'm probably going to try a compost toilet. Yeah, compost toilet. To start with, I'll probably just get a um, cassette toilet uh, and just empty it out at the L sand point every few days. TV license, this is um, debatable. Um, some people say you do, some people say you don't. Personally, I'm making this, I'm trying to make the decision on whether I'll actually have a TV on board at all. Um, I don't think I'll need one, but it's nice to have on occasion if you just want to sit down and watch a, a movie or whatever. Whether you need a TV license, I'm going to leave that one up to you. I may go into it in another, more detail in another video, but um, I've put in a zero figure so I'll probably cancel out TV license because I really don't think I'm going to be watching a lot of uh, a lot of BBC while I'm on the boat. 
Uh, mobile phone, internet, again, it depends on the, um, who you're with and your, you know, who your provider, provider is. Um, but I've put in there a normal amount, about 30 pounds a month. Uh, and that's just to get, you know, mobile internet, essentially, so I can upload YouTube videos like this one. Um, food, again, depends on your lifestyle, but I've put in there 200 pounds a month. That's for two people. So that's 50 pounds a week. We, I guess we spend around 25 pounds a week at the moment. Um, again, it may go up and may go down. Uh, that could include pub meals and things like that. So I've just put in a, a, a figure there of 200 pounds. So total living cost or total variable cost is 294 pounds a month. That gives us a total cost of 868 pounds per month. Now, to have a, I've just done a comparison as well. So I've done a shore living comparison. So these are what we're, this is what we're currently paying now. Okay, so we've got a two bedroom mid terrace in Stockport. It's cost us 650 pounds a month. A council tax, council tax, ridiculous, 175 pounds a, a month. Water, internet, electricity, gas, food, and next mobile, my mobile. Okay. Um, so I've calculated all that and it comes to, oh, and holidays. So given that we're buying a boat, essentially one of the things we're planning on doing is travel around England. Um, but I don't think it's going to cost 400 pounds every time we go away. One of the biggest beefs I have about traveling in this country is how expensive it is. So another reason for getting the boat is so that we can travel around Britain and it doesn't cost us, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred pounds every time we want to go away for a weekend. So I've, I've put that in there, but if we take that out, you look at about 1,200 pounds. That's still a saving of around 400 pounds a month if you were to live on a boat. <laughs> okay, admittedly, you're going to lose around 95% of your space from living in a house, but this is the compromise you have to do if you wanted to get off the water and save a bit of money. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so this is what you're going to have to do. So look, I've... I've Put in there, so including the holiday bit and all the other bits and pieces, it's going to cost us around £1,600 per month. That's what it costs us now. Um, so clearly, you can see, even with all the other bits and pieces added up, it still works out to be about half of what it will cost you to live ashore. Again, it really depends on you know the type of boat you have, how big it is, how old it is. Um, how much repairs need doing to it? Does it need overplating? If you're buying a narrow boat, does it need steel work done? Um, if you're buying a plastic boat, you know, all these sort of things, all this kind of, all these figures are variable. But <clears throat> I've put these into the, um, I've shared these with, shared these figures with various forums online, like Facebook groups and whatever, and got some quite favorable feedback. Um, I've spent quite a lot of time on this and I constantly rejig the figures depending on our circumstances. But this is a, I wouldn't say accurate, but it gives you a good rough idea of exactly how much it's going to cost you once you decide to get onto the cut. Okay, so that wraps up for today. Um, if you've got any questions on the budget, or um, please reach out to me on the YouTube channel, uh, Twitter or Facebook. Um, and uh, also go and jump on our website. I'll put these videos up on my website as well. Um, all I can, I've forgotten the name of it now, all I can, uh, all I can afford, .wordpress.com, and uh, reach out to me, and we're happy to help you out. Okay, that's all for today, folks, and uh, have a great day. See you later.